Hello everyone and welcome to my new video of Python full stack course for beginners. So let's get started. So guys in today's video we'll be seeing how we can do image manipulation with Python. So let's right get into it. So guys in order to perform image manipulation we require to install a module named pillow. So in order to install it, we'll just have to say pip install pillow. And I already installed it. That's why it's saying requirement already satisfied. Now what we are going to do is we are going to say from my PIL. So in order to import stuff, we have to say PIL rather than pillow. And I'm going to say import for me and I'm going to import my image. In my directory, I've got two files of a Ken Kaneki like Two images of Ken Kaneki, one of them is a grayscale, another one is a bit of higher as a one. And I've got one font file as well, which is a TTF file. Uh, I'll be demonstrating its use in just a moment. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to fetch our image. So I'm going to fetch one of these two images. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna say my Ken is equal to my image, which I just now imported dot open. And I'll have to provide the path. So since uh, they are in the same directory, I can just write the name, which is main.jpg. Also, not to mention, you can get the images through links as well. Like I'm opening the image through image.open. You can open the image through links as well. It's a really simple process. I'm just making the video more simplistic and precise. So I'm not including that. Now what I'm going to do is now the scan variable is an image object now this stores this image so what i can do is i can say can dot show or maybe can dot save so i can say can dot save and i'll have to provide the name for what name do i want to save this like i can say my can copy dot png so is that it is going to show the image to me and then it is going to save the image so let's try running it and it opened the image and it saved the image as can copy.png. So this was pretty straightforward. And I'm just demonstrating what all we can do with this right now. Now we can even resize the image. So what I'm gonna say is I'm gonna try to print out the size of the image. So this main.png is 500 by 500. And as you can see, the terminal also printed 500 by 500 in a tuple. So the size of the image is stored in the tuple. Now, in order to resize the image, the process is very similar. So what I can do is I can just say my can dot resize and I'll have to pass the tuple in it. So I can just say 100 by 100 pixels and I have I'll have to reinitialize the variable can. So I just said can is equal to can dot resize 100 into 100. Now I can, you know, print the can dot size and I can even show the image. So I'm going to see like what difference has it made. So as you can see, the image is way too small now and the ratio have changed. We can easily resize the image through PIL. Now, let's say you want to put some, you know, you want to change the brightness. So for that, we use image enhancer. So I'm going to import one more thing, which is image enhance. What I'm going to say is I'm simply going to say my enhance is equal to my image enhance dot brightness and I'll have to pass the image object. So my image object will be Ken. So what I'll do is what I'm thinking to do is I'll just open one more image, which will be Ken2 and I'm going to say image dot open can 2png so I've opened one more image can 2png I'm not going to resize that and I'll remove this also and I'll pass my can 2 image here now what I'm going to do is I'll just say my can 2 image is equal to enhance dot enhance and I'll pass the float like uh, one will be the default value like the default brightness is set to one now, if you want to decrease the brightness, then you'll have to put it to some value of less than one, like 0 0.8, 0 0.7, or 0 
in in order to increase the value you'll just have to say 2 3 2.5 or something like that let's say i want to increase the brightness drastically so i'm just going to say enhance dot enhance 10 now i'm going to say my 10 to dot show we can save the file always i'm just going to do show to fasten up the process and as you can see the brightness have increased drastically like the original image was like this and the brightness was too much increased so i can even say two and as you can see a bit of difference is visible and i can say 0 0.5 to decrease the brightness rather so through these methods we can easily decrease and increase the brightness and if i set this to one then nothing will change now we can also you know set filters to our image so i'm going to say image filter now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say my before you know showing the scan i'm going to say my ken2 is equal to i'm again really initializing my variable i'm going to say ken2 dot filter and i'll have to pass the filter object so i'm going to say my image filter which i just now imported dot gaussian blur there are many filters in image dot filter you can search them out and i have even provided the link of documentation of pil you can have a look at it i'll have to pass a float in it so let's say i can pass five or maybe something we'll we'll see the difference now i have reinitialized my ken2 variable and i've set it equal to ken2 dot filter image filter dot gaussian blur now let's try running it now as you can see the image is blurred and I can even increase this value to something like 20. Now as you can see the image is way too blurred now. So that's what we really wanted. So we can we have seen how we can blur the image, we can change the contrast of the image and stuff like that. Now there's a quick trick. What we can do is we can press control on the keyboard and we can head to image, uh, you know, we can click any of the module and we can get more information regarding that. Like as you can see there are there is a contrast function there is a brightness function brightness we just now use there is a sharpness function so you can you know dig into the modules like this now what i'll do is we have got two images first one is ken2 image second is ken which is just ken kaneki so what i'll do is i'll just before showing this ken up i'm going to paste i'm going to paste this ken image onto the ken2 so what I'm going to say is I'm going to say my ken2 dot paste ken2 dot paste and I'll have to pass the image object which will be my ken then I'll have to pass the you know box which is basically the location so I'll have to pass a tuple and it will have x and y axis so let's say I pass 200 by 200 and as you can see the distance from the x axis is 200 and from the y axis is 200 so it is a purely hit and trial method like let's say i want the profile to be at this this point so what i can say is um this is if this is 200 then if i want to bring it to the maximum then it may be something like 500 and for the y-axis if this is 200 then i may want this to be something like 800 okay so this is still not enough And yeah, I guess this is pretty much fine. Now we have learned how to paste an image. Now what else can we do? We can use image draw. So I'll use image draw to draw text or something. So I'm going to say image draw. Though we can import all the things at once, but I'm explaining each of the modules step by step. We can just get one draw variable, which is which will be equal to my image draw dot draw and i'll have to pass my image so like on which image do i want to you know draw text or a shape or anything so i want to draw the image on my ken2 variable so i've got my draw variable now i'm going to say draw dot text so in the text my first parameter will be the location so this will be a again a tuple so i'm gonna maybe say 100 and 100 for now and I'll pass the text as Ken Kaneki. Now we need to get one font as well. So this the default font is not at all decent. So we need to get one font. Like I'm gonna demonstrate beforehand also, and we can say fill. Fill is just for the color. 
So either we can say white and black like this, like if you want to use the basic colors, or we can provide a tuple for the hexa decimal values or stuff. So for now, I'm just going to use the string. Let's try running it. And as you can see, there is a small ten kaneki written here. So uh, we need to get the font. Now the reason for me putting this font file into the directory was this only. Though it's not necessary, you need not to bring this file into your directory. You can even locate it, it in your system. Like it must be located in something like your Windows um, font, something like this. Only if you have Windows, pretty obvious. So I'm going to say my font is equal to my image font. So I need to import this image font. So for this, I'll just say image font. And I'll just write my image font dot free type font and I'll have to pass the location of it. So what I'll do is I'll just click it F2, copy its name and I'll just paste it right here. The second parameter will be the size of the font, like what should be the size of the text or something. So let's say I want the size to be 20. And I'll have to pass the font parameter after. So I'm going to say my font is equal to my font. So font is the coag and this is my parameter. So I'll just run it. And as you can see, the size is increased. So I can maybe set it to 200. And it is way too much increased. So yeah, it's working. Now what we can say is we can maybe change it to something like 50. Okay, so the font is looking decent now. I want this font to come right here. So what I can say is I can just, you know, change the location of the font. So I can put this maybe 550 only like the way I did in this and for the y-axis I may want to put it 1000 okay so the font is probably below this image so what I can say is I can draw the text after pasting this image and I'll just run it and as you can see the font is here now I can maybe change it to 200 yeah so it's it's perfect now it's coming exactly underneath here so we have arranged our font as well now what else can we do is we can maybe increase the size of a font and we can provide a stroke to the font like i can increase the size to something like 80 and then in the parameters i can say stroke width stroke width will be something like maybe five and i'll say stroke width and I'll set it to some color like white for now and you can even do it like this zero 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 this stands for black so as you can see there are black borders in it and we can probably put red color and provide white borders so it's it's according to you okay so the stroke is working now let's say I want to I want to you know mask my image now the profile which I've pasted, let me try running it. So let's say I want this profile to be circular PFP. So what I can say is I can just create one circle function. So now we are going to do some real stuff in PIL. So I'm going to say my circle and I'll have to pass my PFP, which is just like a profile. And I'll have to pass my size. And I'm going to set the default value of the size to something like 300 by 300. And then I'll resize my PFP. So I'm going to say PFP is equal to PFP dot resize. And I'm going to pass my size, which will be the variable we have passed. And second, it will be image dot anti alias. Secondly, we'll be converting it to RGBA. Now, why RGBA? Because we want the transparency to be there. The alpha variable should be there. So we want it to be RGBA. Now what we'll be doing is we'll define one big size variable. So big size variable will be just a tuple, like the size of the image. Then I'm going to say PFP dot size index one. So index one of the PFP will be the dimension of the X variable. So I'm going to multiply it by three and I'll just pass my PFP dot size the second index. So which will stand for one, which is my Y and I'll multiply it with three as well. Now I've got my big size and I'm going to define my mask variable. So mask variable will be image dot new. And as you can see, I require the mode. So mode will be L, capital L. The size will be my big size. 
and tuple which is an integer will be zero now i'll define my variable draw which will be a local variable and i'm going to say image draw dot draw and i'm going to pass the mask into it and i'm going to say my draw dot ellipse and i'll pass zero and zero in it because there will be no dimension of it plus my big size and i'll say my fill is equal to 255 so this stands for white fill maximum now i'm going to resize my mask as to you know i'm going to reinitialize mask and set it equal to the size of my pft so i'm going to say mask dot resize and i'm going to say my pft dot size and second will be image anti alias so yeah we have converted our mask to exact shape of the exact dimension of the image so i'm gonna use image chops so i'm gonna say image chops which is a subset of pil so what i'm gonna say is mask is equal to image chops dot darker and i'm gonna pass my image one which will be my pfp image one which will be my mask and second i'm gonna say my pfp dot split this is a function and i'm gonna pass negative one index okay so that is all now our image is converted into a circular pfp now i'm just gonna return pfp dot put alpha and i'm just gonna pass the mask so i'll just return this object which will be an image in a circular pfp now there is a difference there is a difference now before pasting this what i'll say is i'll just say my ken is equal to circle circle sorry ken now this can is into a circle but now in order to paste it i just have to say can here as well so first parameter will be my can like i want to case paste my circular can into my can2 so i'll just have to say can2 dot paste first will be my can then will be my location and then it will again be can so let's try running it okay so here was a mistake guys i just have to say return my pfp not basically pfp.putal from mask. So I'll just run it again. And as you can see, the pfp comes with a circular shape. So I'm just gonna set the size again to 500 by 500. Run it again. And as you can see, the pfp comes right ahead. Okay, so we have learned a lot in this video. And I guess this video is pretty much long as well. So, okay, that's it. So we have learned quite a lot today. So that's all for this video guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. Like the video if you liked it. Dislike if you didn't. Subscribe and share for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.